Well, that's an indication that it's time to go into the commodities market, starting with oil prices. It, it fell today by 2% in early trade, extending losses from the previous day as investors worry that aggressive U.S. interest rate hikes could trigger recession and dense fuel demand. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude Futures fell by $2.39 to $103.80 a barrel, while Brent's Crude Futures dropped by $2.24 to $109.50 a barrel. Both benchmarks tumbled around 3% yesterday to hit their lowest levels since mid-May. Investors are continuing to assess how worried they need to be about central banks potentially pushing the world economy into recession as they attempt to curb inflation with interest rate increases. Well, we have Dumebi Uluwale now to help us understand, uh, you know, this talk of recession. Hi, Dumebi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So it seems we are talking more about recession now. How real or how close is this threat of recession? I mean, um, the global economy has been all talks about it. Um, and it's not like it's exactly what it is. The global economy is not yet in a recession. But the possibility of one happening anytime soon is what investors are weighing right now. It's what the markets are weighing. That's what economies are also weighing. And um, if we do, if we go back a bit, it's all stemming from the Russia and Ukraine war. Remember that the world hadn't completely healed from the COVID-19 COVID, yes. pandemic before this happened. So we have inflationary pressures that are triggering a lot of um, um, uh, triggering, trigger, trigger, triggering a lot of um, decisions from monetary policy authorities, and you know they are caught in the, the web of having to curb um, inflationary pressures and at the same time you know be aggressive with interest rate hikes. Normally, interest rate interest rate hikes coming you know gradually, so the markets are somewhat prepared. They know what is happening. They know yeah. by what percentage, and they are able to adjust. But right now, you know. Um, the U.S. Fed is being more aggressive, you know, towards and everybody's following inflationary Exactly. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if MPC will hike the interest rate again. I mean, um, we. C I mean, it's not something that we can say categorically, but the world is tending towards that. And, and anecdotally, we've seen that when the global economy, you know, moves towards a setting uh, um, stance. Here in Nigeria, we, we, we do the same, even though it does take a while. <laughs> it does take a while because when we saw that earlier in the year, when global economy started, you know, um, increasing interest rates, we didn't, you know, do yes. that immediately. But until May. But on, until May. Mm -hmm. And when we did in May, it was really It was high. aggressive. Exactly. <laughs> 150. It was, it was aggressive. So we might see we might see them continue. We might see that, you know, trend continue all in a bit to curb inflationary pressures. Right now, headline inflation is about, it's, it's already 17.7%. 17. 17. We're heading to 18. We're, head, we're headed to 18. And UK really, is heading really to high. double digits. Uh, exactly. You know, 9.1. Exactly. And the US as US well. US is inflation 8 points. Uh, it, about 8.6 or so. Yeah. And now, and, and inflation is at, for, 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 the, for the U.S., the inflationary, the inflation right now is about a 40, 41 year high. So, and all of this is coming from, you know, issues that have, you know, been um, triggered by the Russia and Ukraine war. The, the, the biggest issue of it all is the increase in energy prices and how yes. different countries are just trying to manage. You know, Russia will tell you that it's not about uh, their military operations in Ukraine, that it's, it's the sanctions that the West uh, yeah, is putting on, yes. on, on them. Because, the, the, you know, to them as the as the seller <laughs> i have what you need you're the one saying you're not going to buy so if anything you're the one cutting yourself off <laughs> <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm willing to provide. But even they quite, are cutting quite, off Germany, before, even ahead of time, and a lot of countries, mm. uh, Finland and some other yeah. countries, are, have already been cut off. Poland, mm. you know, even before the end of the year, which the yes. EU... Yes, and, 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 you know, like what the EU did, the, the, no matter how much, you know, they're coming out to say, okay, they are sanctioning Russia and all that, because they still need the commodity. Remember that their 95% Russian oil ban is not until the year end. Mm. So right now, they're still demanding for Russian oil. So what they have done is cut off 75%. So meaning that some countries within the EU are still 
Um, yes, I, of I, course. I still, yes, Hungary is top for... on that list. Uh, they have yes. categorically stated that they are not ready to win off. Uh, yeah, Russia. because because it's 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 going to have a huge dent on their economy. You know, um, as much as what as much as the global economy is fast transitioning away from you know. Did, fossil I, did threat, I hear you say transitioning? Yes, I mean the, the back, Yes, back that, on that's the where that, now. that's where that's where I was headed. <laughs> that as much as you know, we are hearing all of these talks. I mean, before the Russia and Ukraine war started. It. There, were, there, were, there were all talks about it. We heard some countries come out to say by 2030 they are planning to have all Even electric Even South Africa vehicles. tried it. You know, yes, but you know, we, what the, the war has just clearly stated that as much as we want to move towards that, fossil fuels are really not going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> some countries have even reverted to the dirtiest of the dirtiest, coal. which is coal, yes. just in a bit to keep their country powered up. Yeah. So to tell you that we're highly dependent on this commodity and that's why we see a lot of impact on several economies when oil prices swing, either um, uh, oil prices go either up or they come down. Now, and the truth of the matter is this, there are, there are two stakeholders when it comes to all the oil markets right now. They are the oil exporting countries who mm. are, you know, s some actually, who are raking in profits because oil prices are higher. And you have the oil importing countries that are highly affected because they have to satisfy their local demand, but yet prices are higher and they're having to spend more. Mm. So, Nubimi, there's a question that has been on my mind, you know, when we are talking about inflation and yes. the hike in interest rates. So um, it does look like the inflation that the world is experiencing now has a, a whole lot to do with supply disruption. Yes. So I ask myself, is hiking interest rates really dealing with inflation or are we just doing it because that's what textbooks say mm. that when inflation is, you know, surging, then mm. uh, interest rates should also be hiked to deal with it. Is it really what we need at this time? Is it really working? So um, this is, the question you asked is a very fantastic one, I must add. But the truth is that it is very country specific. It is very country specific. Now, let me use Nigeria and I would also use the US as an example. Nigeria, our issues with inflation are not only, they're mainly cost push induced. So we have, we already had structural bottlenecks that were causing inflation to rise. And not until those issues are addressed, inflationary pressures will still be high. But the truth is that we can't also negate the fact that there are also, uh, um, we're also importing some level of inflation mm -hmm. that interest rates could, you know, provide some level of cushion for. So the increase in interest rates basically is just to um, tell, tell investors, or tell, please don't take your money out. We can still leave it here because inflation, as much as when we go back to the basics of inflation, one on one, that's too much money chasing too few goods <laughs> and an increase in general price, increase in general price. So when prices are high, we need to know what factors are causing the price to increase. And on that level, we already know that, okay, we have some lingering structural bottlenecks that are causing this, so we have to address that. But on the other hand, where we look at too much money chasing too few goods, we know that oh, we need to retain some level of cash within the economy to make sure that this money is not going out. And that's where the, the increase in interest rates comes in. Because this increase in interest rates is not, it's not, um, it's not just off the books, right? NPR is an anchor rate. So when the NPR is increased, you see that the, the increase in uh, um, treasury bills also increase. Um, the interest rates, rather, on treasury bills are supposed to anecdotally increase. Um, the, in the interest rates on federal government bonds as well, just to make it more attractive, to reduce liquidity within the system. And then that would have an impact on you know, money supply and then have an impact on uh, uh, um, 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 demand as well and then have an impact on, on the, va on inch on the uh, inflation rate within the economy. So that's how that works. So when we look at the US as well, they are also having issues with energy induced inflation because inflation right now is not just, like I said, it's somewhat imported. You know, they are in the summer season. Um, people are demanding for gasoline. Um, apart from that, and they said they want to have that gas uh, tax, tax holiday. Uh, yes, yes. So what we're seeing that there's also the fact that you know rent is also going up. Just uh, somewhat like what is happening in Nigeria is almost happening there as well. And all of these things are somewhat imported because there's a shortfall in supply, like you rightly said. And because it is imported, like like I explained before, they have to retain money within the economy.
They have to retain money within the economy. And how do they do that? By making what, go what the government is selling more attractive. And how do you do that? <laughs> By increasing interest rates. <laughs> so it, it, might, it, 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 it will definitely take some time for the increase in interest rates to correct the increase in inflation. So the hike in interest rates might not uh, uh, um, uh, um, somewhat curb inflationary pressures immediately, but it will soften the the impact on people. Well, that is why we are discussing recession now. Yes. Why recession is yes. so imminent. <laughs> but there's also stagflation. Yes, so, so there is that. Um, stagflation, very good point again. <laughs> stagflation has to do when, you know, when GDP is declining and inflation is increasing. So when you have that scenario, that's when you say an economy is experiencing stagflation. And that's what right now quite a number of countries are beginning to experience. And in a bid to reduce that, you know, that's where this same interest rate <laughs> increase is coming in. But, you know, some countries as well are also trying to ramp up, you know, supply of their domestic money. And that's why we're seeing an increase in protectionist approach from some countries. For example, in the, um, Indonesia banned, you know, it's palm oil imports, yeah. palm oil exports rather yeah, even so now, that they could even satisfy now they've, even local now that demand. they have removed the, removed it, the policies the export are tax very, is still there yeah it's very still, strict still there. so and in quotes they have unbanned it but yes, i mean in reality it's still expensive exactly it's still expensive and their situation was very unique you know remember i, I mentioned that there are two stakeholders when it comes to oil it's it, it kind of plays that uh, plays out as well when it comes to what's happening with indonesia you see that because price global prices are higher exporters want to make a lot more money they want to take advantage of that so they hoard to the domestic economy and then you know export. try to export so that export taxes you know trying to disincentivize them from doing that but on a global scale we see that several countries are beginning to adopt food protectionist approaches just in a bid to satisfy their local demand tame domestic inflation and increase supply india has come out to say oh it's most likely would you know it's sugar imports is going to you know curb it um um, um or seeing malaysia as well has curbed its um, um, poultry poultry um, um, exportation as well. So, so many countries are coming out to Which ration all of this. What are doing? Nigeria is importing. <laughs> Nigeria is importing, you know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're highly dependent, uh, we're, highly imp we're highly import dependent, and um, the more these prices increase, the more we're exposed and vulnerable to and, external And that's shocks. part of the reason why the World Bank is saying that Nigeria may lose 19 billion yes. naira yes. Uh, yes. this year. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, um, basically, we, we've seen the government come over time and time again. We've seen CBN intervention programs all in a bit to, you know, increase supply. But the main issue has always been when it comes to execution and monitoring or to, to ensure that what has been said on paper is actually being executed. So until we're able to see these metrics actually, we we'll see, we'll see, oh, the Anchors Borat program has actually achieved this amount of increases and people can feel it. Until that trickle down effect is felt, you know, we can't categorically say, okay, this has had a substantial impact on Nigeria. And we've seen the rice pyramid, we've heard something about granite, we've heard things about tomato, but we still import these commodities. We still import them and that's because there is high demand for it, but supply is still in, in, in or supply it, chain short. disruption. Yes. Because, yes. I mean, I spoke to someone in, in the agriculture sector, and he did say that uh, there are stacks and stacks of corn, mm. you know, in some store somewhere. Meanwhile, feed millers are not getting mm. the commodity that they mm -hmm. need. So mm -hmm. where is the disconnect? I mean, I, I, I guess, as you said, uh, it's, it's beyond the policy and yes. the paper yes. it and has celebration to be on television. Ex ex exactly. It, yeah. goes, it goes beyond all of that because um, as much as we are looking at how this would affect consumers because that's the true way to tell whether a policy made at the top has been able to affect the life of people so on, on, on an economic or in a, on, a, on a development scale when you look at growth if you say the economy is growing how well has this impacted the life of an individual in your economy what is the GDP per capita of your country or, or the individual rather how much money can this person take to the market and say oh I, I, I earned this the value of my money has actually increased I can buy this amount but inflation has completely eroded that if you were earning 200,000 as of 2019 and you've continued to earn that till till this year the value of your income has declined by, by over seven yeah, percent you can say, what the, you the can real say value again the real value of your good now yes officially being 165 
But in mm. reality, being... It's about like 300 now. You know what I'm yes. saying. And diesel is also another thing. And these are things that, that people affect, use on a daily basis. You get basis. on transport. Mm -hmm. I mean, even uh, to get petrol, it's connected to diesel. Because yes. the operators in that line are saying, I mean, they use diesel to run their generators. Mm. They use diesel for the trucks that deliver. It. Exactly. So, I mean, you exactly. cannot disconnect any mm -hmm. of those things. Exactly. So if, if all of the policies that we make are not yet trickling down to the masses, you can't say that these policies have been very effective and when it comes to the increase you know the cost that people are bearing people are paying more for transport people are paying more for diesel people are paying more for petrol people are paying more for that people's productivity is declining because traffic is increasing yeah so, man, hour on the man road hours on the road higher. exactly so um food prices are high and remember that i mentioned that the issues affecting nigeria's um food food supply or or uh, inflation is clearly you know, they, they, they have been in existence even before even the pandemic. Before the war. Even, even before, before the, the war. pandemic, even before, before the, the war. war. So we were looking at issues, you know, um, from poor agri-infrastructure, poor storage facilities, loss of, 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 of um, raw materials or loss of these commodities. You produce a basket of tomato, almost half of it is lost, you know, because there's no... Yes, losses. Yes, post-harvest losses and all of these issues. So until these issues are you know, highly addressed, will continue to experience this, yeah, um, well. these issues. Well, this is uh, not a very beautiful picture for Nigeria, maybe, but uh, it's our reality for now. Yeah. And we do hope we can talk ourselves and work it out. <laughs> yes, hopefully. Dumo Biolu Wali, analyst with Financial Derivative. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we'll take a break now. After that break, uh, it's still Nigeria's economy we're looking at. We'll do a review of the first half of the economy and uh, see if we can do a little bit of projection into the second half. Perhaps we'll have a brighter picture then. This is Business Morning on Channel Television.